stuff in case going to happen. Circular. Circular permutation. So this is something like whenever we consider uh, the various types of arrangements uh, around a table, etc. Right. So, for example, we can consider a scenario wherein we have a circle. And let us assume that the circle, circle uh, uh, around the circle, we place say five uh, people. One, two, three, five. So this is A, B, C, D, and E. Right. So the A, B, C, D, E sit uh, like this. This is one area. But you see, since the circle or uh, a table, whenever we try to uh, rotate in this uh, rotate uh, positions, right? Uh, without changing the arrangement, in the sense, A, B, C, D sit next to each other in the same fashion. Uh, wherever they sit, it's considered as the same position, right? Which means, right? If A shifts to this position, B comes to this position, C goes here, and D goes here, and A, E is shif shifting to A's position, right? That still is the same combination as this combination, what we are seeing. Like, like the same way, we can even shift five uh, different times. Like, this shift can occur five times. Still, it is the same, right? This is because... Uh, basically, we don't have which is the starting point here. There is no fixed starting point whenever we are considering a circular arrangement, right? That is the fundamental reason here. But at the same time, if uh, I'm considering what you call as a linear combination, right, or linear uh, sorry linear arrangements, instead of this, if you if at all you consider, say, let me assume that I consider uh, a bench, and I'm making the same five people to sit on a bench, let us say. Okay, so five positions are marked. This is A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so this is A, B, C, D, E. Now you see, it has a starting point and it has an end point, head and tail, like that. If at all I shift to right by one unit, so E coming here, A, B, C, and D, you see, it is a completely different uh, arrangement. Such arrangement is possible, right, in case of linear, and whereas circular, it will be still considered as the same, what you call, it's the same arrangement. So, because of that, now, in the, among the total number of uh, arrangements that are possible when it is uh, a circular, right, it is completely lesser n times lesser compared to the linear arrangement. Linear arrangement will have n more cases. So that is because if five people sit along, sit on a circular table, right, five different shifts will not change the arrangement at all. So that five, which is a number of people, right, times lesser. All right. So let's try to write one uh, equation over here. Right, so this is the point which I mentioned just now. So I'll just write that one. So if let us say n uh, different n different things or objects, n different things or objects are arranged along a circle. along a circle right this means for each arrangement
right for each arrangement where exist n number of linear arrangements so one circular corresponds to n linear correct so i can actually write this in a different way therefore now i'll write a form this implies right the number of linear arrangements number of linear number of linear arrangements should be equal to there is a n getting multiplied with number of circular arrangements number of circular circular array so this is the first formula which we have to remember then let's go to another topic here the arrangements of flowers okay around a garden the same concept can even be considered as the arrangement of beads around a necklace or something all right okay <clears throat> okay so in this case uh, i have n uh, say flowers and i want to look at the number of uh, permutations of n different flowers taken at a time right so this is like whenever I say like this, the whether you do it in the clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? Uh, arrangements are not different, are same, right? You you write it in a clockwise or anti-clockwise. That arrangement will be considered as same. So I'll just write a in bracket here, right? Uh, the clockwise and anti-clockwise anti-clockwise arrangements are the same are considered as same they are not different all right so under such condition number number of circular permutations the number of circular permutations of n n different flowers all at all at a time in a sense we are not uh, distinguishing which flower is taken at what time all are taken at the same time so this is given by this is equal to the half of n minus 1 factorial again important point is that uh, we are not differentiating whether you are building the flower clockwise or anti there is no difference Okay, assuming that we are making this statement and this is the required equation all right let's quickly go to a problem find the number of ways in which the 
well h can be arranged to form a necklace is the question okay so the answer is straightforward it's the same uh, idea like uh, the previous example or the example we considered to understand the concept so it's equal to half of n minus one. half of n is 12 so 12 minus 1 factorial so we require answer that is half into 11 factorial okay so just calculate and uh, give an answer So the answer is one double five eight four double zero. So so many combinations, sorry, so many permutations are possible. All right. Let's go to the next question. Consider. 21 different pearls on a necklace. How many ways? be placed on this necklace such that three of the specific pearls Always together, right? So we have 21, 21 different pearls in the necklace. Right? In how many ways you can arrange them, you can rearrange them, uh, but the condition is that three of the pearls should be all together. Okay, so that's the question. So, when you solve this, the answer should be equal to, we have first half into 18 factorial into three of them can be arranged in six ways, right? So, six, so this is three into 18 factorial, right? 18, 18 factorial is too, too big, you don't have to find, okay? That's fine. Let's move on to the next topic under the same. This is the restricted uh, circular permutations. When we, whenever we have some restrictions, let's see what is the uh, way to uh, solve. Restricted circular Permutation. All right. The first one is uh, let, let, we have two conditions here. Let me take it as a case number one. There is some restrictions under this case. Now, clockwise and anti-clockwise orders are taken as different, and say the number of circular permutations of n different. Uh, things taken r at a time not all the n at a time okay so this is the first uh, scenario so here we say that if the clockwise and 
the anti-clockwise clockwise and anti-clockwise orders are considered to be different First thing, and we have another condition. Uh, the number of circular permutations, number of circular permutations of n different things n different things taken r at a time so it's like we are taking only r objects out of n objects and placing it around a circle that's the first thing and the second idea is that uh, so the clockwise arrangement is completely different than the anti-clockwise. If that is the condition, then this is n e r divided by r. Okay, I can actually further simplify this that one by r into let me write the n p r here. N p r is nothing but this is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Right. So you can use this equation to solve this particular thing. All right, that's the case one. Now, let's move on to the other case. We'll see the equation and the condition. Okay, so, this is case number two. The second case is like clockwise and anti-clockwise orders are taken as same, but the number of circular permutations are taken only for R objects out of N objects. Okay, so this is the circular permutation of R, R objects out of N objects, R objects out of N objects with Clockwise arrangements. And anti clockwise arrangements as same, right? Clockwise and anti clockwise, no differentiation. But I am not taking all the n objects at a time. I am simply taking r objects out of n objects. Okay, so if this is the condition, then the equation is n e r divided by 2r. Only that is a difference. So I can rewrite this as 1 by 2r into n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So the previous answer divided by 2. Okay, all right, so these are the two different uh, cases over here. Let's solve uh, some problems very quickly. Now, the question is in how many ways can twenty four persons be seated around a 13 chair table. So only 13 uh, chairs are there, right, around a table and you want uh, 24 people to sit. 
now so clockwise anti clockwise should be different here right so people sitting in a clockwise and anti clockwise obviously it is different so i have to uh, consider the case 1 over here so the answer should be uh, 24 p 13 divided by the r r is 13 okay so this is after substitution uh, n n is equal to 24 factorial divided by 13 into 24 minus 13 is 11 so 11 factorial is a required answer okay next question number of arrangements possible by arranging 12 beads out of 18 beads of various colors to form necklace. All right, so now you see it's just about colors. So remember one thing when it comes to the necklace, beads, flowers, there is no distinguish, you cannot distinguish between the clockwise and anti clockwise. So this falls under the case two. Okay, so this has to be 18 P 12 divided by 2 times 12, N P R divided by 2 R. Okay, so this is n 18 factorial divided by uh, 2 into 12, that is 24 times 18 minus 12 is 6, so 6 factorial. So this is the required answer. All right. Then let's move further. Okay. The next concept that we are going to consider is called as the combinations. Now, uh, if our objective is to form different groups right which can be made by some or all of uh, given items without worrying about the order of the items or order of the uh, objects in a group we are going to call that as a combination All right, so the number of selections that can be out of given objects. Given our objects without considering their order, right, is what is called as the combination. Right. 
So the first point under this is how do you represent? So the number of combinations of n different objects taken r at a time that has a specific notation like uh, the number of uh, permutations we have a number of combinations. So let's write that point the uh, number of the number of combinations of n different n different objects taking r at a time right so that is denoted by n c r so the equation to represent this is nothing but the n c r divided by r factorial so the relation between n c r and n p r are let's substitute what is n p r n p r is n factorial divided by there is a n minus r factorial. I have to right keep the r factorial which is here. So this is the actual formula, right? Anyway, n factorial, you know how to write r factorial and n minus r. You can substitute and you can write it this way. Okay, let us try to write uh, some of the important uh, relationships related to the NPR and NPR, NCR. So, this is going to be in note. We are going to use this several times. So, the first one, first note under this is, is whenever I try to calculate this, the NCR is a natural number always it's not real it's always a natural number like a whole number 1 2 3 20 20 30 50 80 like that okay so that's first thing and then right uh, if r is greater than n right then always ncr equal to 0 Okay, then the next uh, rule is n c zero is same as n c n that is always equal to one. So n c zero refers to in how many ways you can select zero items from n items. That's always one, right? You select nothing once. One combination is possible. Similarly, out of n, all the n has to be selected. That is also possible with n, uh, sorry, with one as answer. Okay, so that's the point. Then the next one, out of n objects, how can you, how many ways you can select one, one object at a time? It's n times. n c one is n. Okay, now, so the next one, if, the n c r is equal to n p r this means there is only one condition possible whenever r is equal to 0 or p r is equal to 1 all right the next uh, identity or next property of uh, between n c r and n p r are like this if at all i can calculate n c r this is also equal to n c n minus r right whenever the r is greater than n by 2 okay so if this is the case i can write if if that's the condition you can see all right then so if we say n c x is equal to n c y 
this implies either x is equal to y or there is another condition that is x plus y is equal to n. In both the cases, yes, it is, uh, it holds good. Then the next one, n c r plus n c r minus 1 is always equal to n plus 1 c r. The next property is n c r can also be written as n by r to n minus 1 c r minus 1. That's one important property. And the next important property is if at all I write n into n minus 1 c r minus 1, this is same as n minus r plus 1 times n times c r minus 1. All right, and one more property to follow. So this is also equally important. If at all I have a ratio n c r divided by n c r minus 1, I can directly write this is equal to n minus r plus 1 divided by r. Okay. Then the next property if n is a even number, if n is even, this implies the value of NCR is highest. For the value r being equal to n by 2. Whenever the r becomes half of n, the ncr gives you the highest value. That's the that's one part of your uh, this point. The same point can be extended in this way. So let us say if the n is odd. Okay, if this n is odd, then n c r is highest for r is equal to n minus 1 by 2 or r is equal to n plus 1 by 2. both will give you the highest either this or that All right then the next important property if at all I want to do this summation nc0 plus nc1 plus nc2 dot 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 up to all the terms up to ncn this is always equal to 2 to the power n. Okay, similarly nc0 plus nc2 plus nc4 up to the last term is also is equal to the nc1 plus nc3 odd numbers plus nc5 plus till the last number is always equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. All right, then we have another property. Two n plus one c naught plus two n plus one c one plus two n plus one c two, and so on, right up to two n plus one c n is always equal to 2 to the power 2n.
Okay, then we have another property. This is n c n plus n plus one c n, n plus two c n, and so on till two n minus one c n. This is always equal to two n c n plus one. Okay, next. Yeah, I think we have uh, finished the properties. Let's uh, solve some of the problems. Right. The first one is this. If 15 C 3R is equal to 15 C r plus 3 then find what is r c 2 so from the given equation the whatever is written here right they should be same in both the cases they should match right because 15 is common over there so this basically implies that 3 r is equal to r plus 3 All right, so uh, th this means 4R. So we have two conditions. Either this has to be same or I have another condition because you see that uh, the property say that either X equal to Y or the other condition is X plus Y is equal to N. What is X plus Y, y equal to N? That is 3R plus r plus 3 should be equal to n which is 15 either of them is has to be same correct so let's bring this to the other side so this in this case you can see 3r minus r is equal to 2r 2r is equal to 3 so r is equal to uh, how much 3 by 2 is it possible r is it it means when i put r as uh, whatever 3 by 2 it means right you are trying to select a fraction of items from whole number right taking 3 by 2 items from 15 items not possible you have to take either 3 or 4 or 1 or 2 right no fraction so that is not possible right so we rule out this answer let's go to the other one so this is 3 r plus r that is 4 r 4 r is equal to 15 minus 3 so that is 12 so you can see r becomes equal to how much r is equal to 3 right select this because it's a whole number r cannot be equal to 3 by 2 and r is equal to 3 is the valid answer so this implies they are asking what is r c 2 right r is equal to 3 3 c 2 right so 3 c 2 right is nothing but uh, you can calculate and uh, get the answer i think answer comes directly as 3 so this is the required answer All right, let us move on to the next question. N C nine equal to N C seven. Find the value of N. So when we solve this, we get the answer n equal to 6c is the right answer. All right. Next. If 2n c3 divided by n c3 is equal to 11 find the value of n is the question
We'll start from what is a given. It says that uh, 2nc3 by nc3 is 11. So let us substitute for 2nc3. So this is uh, 2n into 2n minus 1 into 2n minus uh, 2 all divided by uh, it's a 3 factorial so I'll write 1 into 2 okay whole divided by write for nc3 nc3 is also n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by say 1 into 2 anyway this will cancel okay this is equal to 11 All right, now I just have to simplify the terms like this. So let me take a 2 out from this. n minus 2 will go out. The uh, n, n cancels. Uh, we have, okay, n minus 2 cancels with this as 2. So the simplified answer will be 2 into 2. So this is 4 times 2n minus 1 divided by denominator. I just have a uh, n minus 2 cancels this also. It's not n minus 2, it's n minus 1. Not n minus 1. This is n minus 2. n minus 1 cancels with the n 2 times n minus uh, 2n minus 2 as 2 times. Because when you take 2 outside, n minus 1 remains. That n minus 1, n minus 1 cancels. Okay, right. So this divided by n minus 2 in the denominator is equal to 11. Alright, now let us try to cross multiply. So this is 4 times 2n minus 1 is equal to 11 times n minus 2. So 4 into 2, this is 8n minus 4 is equal to 11n minus 22. So 8n, 11n minus 8n is 3n should be equal to 22 going to other side plus 22 minus 4 is plus 18. So, n is equal to 6 is the required answer. All right, next question. If n plus 1, c r plus 1, 2, n c r, to n minus 1 cr minus 1 are in the same ratios like 11 to 6 to 3. Okay, if this is the case, uh, find n and r is a question. So we have two unknowns, we should get two equations, then we'll be able to solve. Okay, uh, so therefore, after solving this with the two equations, we get the following. N equals to 10 and R equal to 5. One more question. If n c r minus one equals to thirty six, now n c r equals to eighty four, and n c r plus one is one twenty six. Find the value of R is a question. Okay, uh, here we'll start the solution by taking one specific ratio because we already have uh, something uh, readily available in the form of a formula. The formula says that, let's try to write this, that is NCR. Uh, divided by n c r minus 1, right? I'll try to take that ratio, n c r by n c r minus 1 
84 by 36. Okay, that is given, but I know that NCR by NCR minus 1 according to the formulae which we have written earlier in the in, in the form of points, it's nothing but N minus R plus 1 divided by R. So, cross multiply 84 R is equal to 36 N minus 36 R plus 36. Okay, so let us try to reduce this. Actually, we can simplify here. This is 7 by 3. So I can uh, rewrite this as PR. So this is 7R is equal to 3N minus 3R plus 3. Okay, so taking this to the other side, so totally I have therefore 10R minus 3 times N. Uh, let's keep this 3 on the same side. So equal to 3. Call this is equation number 1. Alright, do the same thing with the other ratio. I have another ratio that is NC R plus 1 divided by NCR. Same similar ratio, right? This is given as 126 by 84, but let us use the formula. Formula says N minus R plus 1. Instead of R, I have R plus 1. Okay. Plus 1 divided by R plus 1. So the numerator becomes simply N minus R. So minus 1 plus 1 cancel. So I still have N minus R. Denominator is r plus 1 is equal to cancel this. So this is 2 times, this is 3 times. So this is simply 3 by 2. Cross multiplication 2n minus 2r is 3r plus 3. Okay. So we got this. Now let us continue. So simplify this, this becomes 5R minus 2N minus 3, okay, equals to minus 3. Two n is equal to minus 3. Let's call this as equation number 2. Now solve this to find the value of N and R. Right, solve equation one and equation number two, right, to get the value of n and r. Yeah, that's right. This is the required answer.